Okay, so here's some uh, more uh, shortcuts uh, rules for um, derivative. Uh, last week we uh, uh, went over uh, finding the derivative using the definition of derivative, uh, <coughs> and in particular using the um, difference quotient. Um, and we went over uh, six sort of shortcut rules uh, for particular uh, fun uh, functions. Um, and here's some more uh, shortcuts. Um, uh, derivative of the sine, uh, the shortcut rule there is, is equal to the cosine. Derivative of the cosine is minus the sine. Derivative of the tangent is secant squared. Derivative of the cotangent minus cosecant squared. Derivative of the secant is secant times tangent. Uh, derivative of the cosecant minus cosecant times cotangent. Uh, I will uh, go over some of the uh, proofs of these shortcuts. Um, uh, but before I do that, uh, I'll just um, go over some examples of uh, how to use these formulas. Um, and um, so uh, we have a function f of x equal uh, 4 times the sine x plus um, uh, x to the 17th power. So we can apply several different rules here. Um, uh, the um, a constant we can factor out of the, of, out of the derivative. So um, f prime of x is going to be um, 4 times the derivative of uh, the sine uh, plus um, the derivative of uh, uh, x to the 17th. So we can factor out the 4 and derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. That was one of the shortcuts uh, from last week. <coughs> and then um, and now uh, we can use um, rule number 7 here. The derivative of the sine is the cosine. Um, and we can use the, the power rule from last week. The derivative of, of uh, x to the 17 is 17 x to the 16. Okay. Um, so that's the uh, uh, derivative. Uh, okay. So uh, okay. So I'll go over the proof of the um, of the sine rule. Um, <coughs> and this diagram can help, uh, although we probably do it without the diagram, but um, um, for in the first quadrant, um, uh, for theta between 0 and pi over 2, uh, uh, sine of theta is going to be less than theta, and theta is going to be less than tangent theta. So uh, the picture looks like this. Um, theta is measured in radians, so theta is, um, uh, theta is just the um, length of the, of the um, of the um, arc on, on the uh, or the section of the circle on uh, this is a circle is radius one. This is a unit circle here. We have radius one, um, and the um, uh, the angle is the same as the, the length of the um, uh, the arc there. Um, and so um, sine of theta is going to be the, the opposite uh, opposite side divided by this. It's the opposite divided by hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is one. So this uh, line here is. Um, uh, sine of theta, and the tangent theta is the sine over the cosine, but uh, this larger triangle um, is the, has the same angle theta, has the same tangent, so sine over the cosine uh, is, is a tangent, but that's the same as tangent over 1. So uh, this, this ratio here, uh, this is uh, the, the radius of the uh, circle, uh, which is, is 1. So, um, so as it suggested from the, from the diagram, uh, sine theta uh, is less than theta, and theta is less than tangent theta. And then we could um, uh, divide everything by sine. So uh, as long as uh, um, theta is more than is between zero and pi over two, um, and, and excluding the endpoints, um, the sine is going to be positive. So we're, we're um, um, uh, dividing the sine is not going to change the direction of the inequality. Um, so if we divide through, we get uh, 1 is less than theta over sine theta, which is less than 1 over cosine theta. And if we flip these, um, uh, we can, uh, if we, the reciprocals will be in the reverse order. Uh, so that means that uh, the cosine, if you flip it, cosine theta would be the smallest one. And um, uh, 1 is going to be the largest one. So, and uh, sine theta over theta will be in the middle. Um, and then we take the limit uh, as uh, theta goes to zero from the positive side, uh, and um, so because we're in the first quadrant here, um, and um, so the by the, uh, the the 
the two limits on the on the far left and the far right uh, are both one. The limit is theta goes to zero from the positive side of cosine theta is one, uh, because cosine theta is a continuous function. Uh, the limit as theta goes to zero uh, from the positive side of one is one because limit of a constant is just that constant. So then, um, by the uh, by the pinching theorem or the squeeze theorem, that means the um, the expression in the middle also has to have the same limit. So that uh, proves that as uh, theta goes from zero to the po from the positive side, sine theta over theta is equal to one. Um, you, you can, um, I, I mean, intuitively, if you think about the graph of the sine uh, function, um, the, the fine sine function um, in the first quadrant, uh, well, I'll do more than the first quadrant, but the, the, sine, the sine is like this. And um, so this is uh, sine x. And um, then the, the um, uh, x itself um, is, um, is f of x equal x is just this line here. This is x, and you know it. It looks like um, you know as as um, x gets approached close to zero, and as x, sine x gets close to zero, it looks just from the graph. It looks like they have approximately the same. Um, uh, the same slope there, so um, it's not surprising, I guess, that the the ratio uh, would be one um, in the in the limit. Um, okay, so um, okay, so we can make a, a similar argument that as 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 theta goes from zero from the negative side, that sine theta over theta is equal to one, and that means the two sides limit uh, is limit as theta goes to zero, sine theta over theta is equal to one. Um, and we can actually use this as a proof that um, um, this is this uh, this um, this limit is going to be used in the proof of the uh, of the derivative of uh, uh, the sine um, function. Uh, so uh, then another expression that we're going to be using is the limit as x theta goes to zero one minus cosine theta over theta uh, uh, is equal to um, zero. So uh, what we can do is um, uh, we can multiply top and bottom by one plus um, uh, cosine theta. One plus cosine theta. Uh, as this is approximately two. As theta goes to zero, this is approximately one plus one over one plus one. So there's no difficulty in multiplying that. And then um, if we expand the, the numerator with the FOIL method. Um, Zero. Um, the outer and the inner product are going to cancel. The outer product is uh, uh, plus cosine x. The inner product is minus sine x. So we just have first times first. One times one is one, and last times last minus cosine theta times minus cosine theta is minus cosine squared theta um, over theta times uh, one plus cosine theta. Okay. So um, the um, one minus the cosine and squared is equal to sine squared. If you remember the identity, um, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And if you solve for uh, sine squared, you get uh, sine squared is one minus cosine squared. Um, so, um, so this we can pr replace the numerator by um, sine squared theta. Uh, so we have sine squared theta over theta 1 plus cosine theta. Okay, so then we can put this uh, into um, the product of two fractions. Uh, we can take uh, write this as uh, limit theta goes to zero, uh, sine theta uh, over theta times um, sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. Um, and if we take the limit of these separately, um, uh, limit of a product is the product of the limit. So that we can write this as a limit of theta goes to zero, sine theta over theta times the limit um, theta goes to zero, sine theta over one plus cosine theta. Um, well, this uh, this part is one. Um, this limit here we already 
uh, said was one uh, in the previous argument. And then um, this this piece here uh, is going to be, um, so we're going to have one, uh, one times, uh, this limit here is uh, sine of theta is, uh, as theta goes to zero, zero. Cosine it goes to one. So, um, so you have one times zero over one plus one, which is uh, zero. Okay. Um, okay, so we can use those um, uh, in the uh, <coughs> Uh, proof of the shortcut formula for the sine. Uh, okay, so now uh, let's uh, use the definition of derivative. Uh, 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 definition of uh, derivative, we'll use the um, um, function notation, uh, function uh, notation uh, f prime of x uh, equals the limit as h goes to zero, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And um, the function that we're working, working with is the sine, so this is the limit as h goes to zero of sine of x plus h minus sine of x over h. Um, and then uh, we can use the um, the rule for uh, the sum of uh, uh, two angles, uh, or the sine of the sum of, of two angles. Um, so this is going to be um, uh, the limit uh, <coughs> limit as uh, h goes to zero of uh, sine x uh, cosine at, uh, h um, uh, sine x uh, cosine h plus um, uh, cosine x sine h and then minus sine x. So this is uh, the, the, the formula for the sum of uh, um, sine of x plus h. Uh, and it's all over h. <coughs> okay, so um, uh, okay, so we can um, uh, rearrange these terms here. Uh, this is going to be Limit h goes to zero. We want to put the minus sine x with with the with the with the um, uh, with the sine x cosine h. Um, so we'll have um, uh, sine uh, sine x cosine h uh, minus sine x over h. And then uh, we'll put the other piece together. We have uh, the cosine x um, sine h over h. Okay, so we, we can factor out. Um, there's a common factor of sine x here. So we'll factor that out. Um, limit h goes to zero of, um, of uh, sine x Uh, if we factor out the sine, we'll, we're going to have um, uh, cosine h minus 1 over h. And then um, here we'll, we'll <coughs> uh, factor out the um, the cosine. We'll have plus cosine x sine h over h. And um, uh, Okay, so we said that uh, uh, before that these two both go to zero. Uh, uh, well, the you know, computer the limits before this one goes to zero, and this one goes to one. Um, so when you take the limit, um, we're going to get um, the. Um, so this is limit at h goes to zero. So it, the sine of x is, is uh, doesn't have an h in it, so it's not going to be affected by the limit. So when we take the limit. Uh, we're going to get um, sine x times 0 plus cosine x times 1. And that's just equal to cosine x. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, so that's the proof that the derivative of the sine uh, is equal to the cosine. Uh, there's uh, a similar uh, argument, a similar proof uh, would also proves that the cosine the cosine is minus the sine 
Um, and um, let's see if I uh, yeah, we can we can actually um, um, let's see, we could also do uh, the the uh, tangent rule. Um, let's do the proof of the tangent rule. Uh, we can use the um, um, the quotient rule. For, for once we prove the sine and the cosine, we can use the quotient rule for, for the other functions. So, um, uh, if we do the uh, the proof of the um, the tangent rule, um, so um, derivative of the tangent uh, that's equal to a derivative uh, of the um, sine x over cosine x and we can use the quotient rule there um so for the for the for the other uh, function tangent cotangent uh, secant cosecant we can um uh, one way of, of deriving those is to um rewrite them in terms of sine and cosine and then uh we can use the quotient rule so it's uh um it's going to be the denominator squared and then the denominator times the derivative of the numerator. Um, minus uh, the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Um, okay, so um, derivative of the sine, oh, we said was cosine. So this is going to be cosine squared. And derivative of the um, Cosine is minus the sine, so this will be minus sine x um, <coughs> times minus sine x over cosine squared x. Um, and negative times negative is positive, so we'll have uh, cosine squared x plus sine squared x over a cosine squared x. Uh, cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, that's, that's Pythagorean identity. and um, so uh, and um, this is one over cosine x times one over cosine x, and um, the the secant is uh, I'm, is uh, one over the cosine. So this is uh, secant x times secant x, which is secant squared x. Um, so that shows that the derivative of the um, tangent um, is equal to um, secant squared. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's go over some more examples. Um, uh, derivative of um, uh, 4x, the quantity 4x cubed plus 5x times cosine x. So here we want to combine um, the rule for um, um, the, the, the product rule with the rule for the cosine and, and, the, and the power rule. Actually, we're using several rules here. So the, uh, start out with the product rule. So uh, through the product, it will be the first factor times the derivative of the second factor. <coughs> and then plus the, um, yeah, I'm running out of room here, uh, plus the uh, second factor times the derivative of the, um, of the first factor. Okay, so um, uh, derivative of the cosine is um, minus the sine, so this will be uh, 4x cubed plus 5x times minus the sine x, and um, plus cosine x. And here we can use, um, well, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives and uh, a concept we can pull out. Use the power rule here, uh, be uh, 3 times x to the, to, to the um, so this is going to be 4 times 3 times x to the second, and then derivative of 5x is just uh, 5. <coughs> okay, so if we, um, so there's not much we can do to simplify this. Uh, we could pull out the minus sign here. Um, the minus uh, 4x cubed plus 5x sine x, um, and then um, 4 times 3 is 12, so it would be, um, uh, plus um, 
12 x squared plus 5 times the cosine x. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, derivative of that. <coughs> um, okay, so here's uh, another example. Um, <coughs> derivative of tangent x over x minus 1. So um, this is, um, here we're going to use the um, um, quotient rule. Start out with the quotient rule. So f prime of x. Uh, okay, so we'll have denominator squared. Denominator times the derivative of the numerator. Uh, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Um, and um, derivative tangent is the secant squared. Minus 1 secant squared x uh, minus the tangent. Uh, derivative of x minus 1 is just this 1 over x minus 1 squared. Okay, so that's um, there's 1 times anything, it's just that thing. So there's not really much to do, to, much simplification we can do. Um, um, okay, so that's the, um, the derivative uh, of that function. <coughs> um, and, uh, and that concludes this presentation.